Welcome to the third installment of our Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guides instructional video series. In the previous video, we outlined the general workflow for conducting calculations on projects. Now, let's take a look at how this works in practice by going through an example. Keeping track of information. During the calculation process, you may choose to keep track of the calculations, takeoffs, and values in many ways. However, a helpful tool for carrying out the calculations is available the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide Spreadsheet. This spreadsheet allows the user to input clear field, linear, and point transmittance values and quantity takeoffs, and provides the overall effective R and U value based on the thermal bridging equation. It also provides the percentage contribution of each assembly to the overall heat flow. This helps recognize which details need more attention for refinement. The spreadsheet also allows different details to be turned on and off, allowing you to include or exempt the impacts of specific details. Further instructions can be found within the spreadsheet. Example Calculation For this example, let's look at a simple project, a six-story mid-rise building that requires a whole building energy model for compliance to the BC STEP code. We've been brought on board early in the design to conduct thermal bridging calculations for inputs into the whole building energy model. Conceptual design. At this stage in the project, there are no detailed drawings and the envelope design is still fluid. But the project team is thinking of using mainly architectural concrete, window wall, and concrete balconies. However, the project team has questions about the feasibility of this approach and how thick the walls might need to be to meet the project requirements. The energy model is not yet started at this stage and hard targets for the envelope U values have not been established. However, expectations for the building envelope U-values can be provided based on past experience or other resources such as Building Pathfinder or sections of the BETB guide. In this case, we've decided to wait for more information before making our first U-value calculation. Schematic Design During the schematic design, you can make an initial U-value calculation at the same time as the building envelope energy model is developed. For the calculation at this stage in the design, we start with reviewing the available information and outlining our assumptions. There are no wall, roof, or floor schedules yet for any building envelope details, so we know we'll have to make assumptions regarding the assemblies and thermal transmittances. Identifying the assemblies. We know there will likely be one main roof and one insulated floor assembly above the below grade parkade. In the whole building energy model, the roofs and floors will be inputted as separate assemblies and require separate U value calculations. For this example, we are focusing on the walls. Architectural concrete columns and window wall spandrels are identified in the elevations. In discussing with the energy modeler, they would like to include both of these wall assemblies in one U-value calculation. This assumption can always be refined and updated later on. The next step is to identify the interface details. Here we identify the window to wall interface, roof to wall interface, at grade interface, intermediate floor intersections, corners, and balconies. Takeoffs. First, we determine the area of our two clearfield assemblies. The opaque wall areas exclude the glazing, glass, and frames. From there, you can determine the lengths of our linear interface details. This can often be a simple approach for obvious interfaces, such as intermediate floors, where we can draw an outline around the building perimeter from the plans. For glazing interfaces, we can draw an outline around the perimeter of the windows on elevation drawings. This can be followed through for the remaining interface details that we have. For point transmittances, you must count up how many beam penetrations, roof anchors, or other single point details occur. This will likely not be known until much later in the design, but you can estimate a number. In our case, we don't see any. The takeoff tips mentioned here and other special considerations are discussed further within the BETB guide and in the next video. Assigning values. At this early stage, we will only have placeholder values, so we can consult tables 2 to 5 in the BETB guide for default transmittances or the visual summary in Appendix B. Since there are many options, it's up to you whether you want to provide pessimistic placeholder values to establish a worst case scenario, or more optimistic transmittances that represent efficient details, with the expectation that the design will incorporate that type of detailing for the project. Better yet, you can do both to show the range of what U-values can likely be achieved. In our example, we made two spreadsheet calculations to find the top end and bottom end overall U-values based on the conventional and efficient detailing. For the high end, we included thermal breaks at balconies, full insulation wrap at parapets, and additional insulation at window-to-wall interfaces. 
calculations. With the assemblies, details, areas, lengths, u-values, and side values inserted into the overall u-value calculation equation, or into the BETP spreadsheet, we find that the overall u-value for the opaque walls range between u0.2 and u0.286, or between R3.5 on the low end and R5 on the high end. You can plug these values into the whole building energy model to get the energy use impact from the envelope, or consult Building Pathfinder to assess if this is enough to get to the required step. For our project, the energy modeling results come back and indicate that they need to achieve at least an R10 from the opaque walls to get to the required step. Refine Calculations Knowing that the envelope doesn't meet the performance requirements from the model, our project will need to go through some design changes, which will require coordinating the design team. U-value calculations play a critical role in this process because what works or doesn't work can be tested. We can start to refine the thermal transmittances to improve the overall U-value. The first place is to look at the percentage contribution of each of the transmittance values. This can help focus on details that have the most impact. Looking at the clear walls first, we find that increasing the insulation further has a minimal impact and would make the walls unreasonably thick, so we have to look elsewhere. On our project, the thermal transmittance of the balconies is quite high, even with thermal breaks, so the design team may choose to explore reducing the balcony size. The amount of window wall may need to be reduced or the concrete walls may need to be switched to an exterior insulated system such as a steel frame wall with cladding or precast concrete. These decisions need to be explored with the impact on other requirements such as constructability, structural support, and combustibility requirements. This stresses the importance of making early calculations so that you can minimize the impact of potential design changes on the project. For our example, we determined that to reach R10 for the opaque envelope, the current design is not sufficient, and we have to switch to an exterior insulated steel frame wall assembly and reduce the amount of window wall while still meeting all the project requirements. From there, it's straightforward to update the values once the details are further developed. When the design is finalized, we can further refine thermal transmittances that match the final design. Or, during the process, we can use the details in the BETP guide to better inform the design so that efficient details are more likely to be considered and incorporated into the design. Thank you for watching. Up next is video 4, Special Considerations.